Uh, I've got a question, not really a speech, because I'm not good at speeches. Um, weren't the strategic response group with their darker uniforms, their tactical gear, their M4 assault rifles, their helmets, are they going to be on like 21st Street again, uh, trying to threaten us uh, as, oh. as a group? Um, or, you know, just so we know where to send the photographers and the legal <laughs> Hello, my name is Colin Ashley. I'm with the Reclaim Pride Coalition. Uh, uh, I've also been an activist in the Black Lives Matter mo movement in this city. Black Lives Matter. Um, someone mentioned that they saw the NYPD as a civil institution. Uh, I want to be clear that the NYPD as a racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic institution is a present threat to my life and to the life of my family and my community. Uh, they are an institution of terror to many in this city and in our community. Uh, but today I want to be clear that HOP is complicit in that oppression and HOP is complicit in my oppression. I think it is disgustingly hypocritical of HOP in this moment of increased state repression to name this pride defiantly different and to even talk about the anniversary of Stonewall while increasing these forms of policing that the most marginal in our community will face. Amen. While it might be interesting to talk about the experiences of oppression that Gold faces in an oppressive institution, it's actually fundamentally important in this day and age to talk about the real forms of oppression that LGBTQ people of color, poor LGBTQ people, and trans and gender non-conforming members of our community face. The risk to their very lives, often at the hands of police who have always been oppressors in our community. While I believe that HOP will lose this battle and that it's increasingly important for us as a community to fight back, to take back our parade that represents our battle for liberation. I actually do have a question. Uh, we, know that, we know that the policing on the piers and in the West Village on Pride Day itself uses barricades and policing as weapons directly against black and brown queer bodies. I want to know what has HOP ever done to prevent that policing on the piers and why should we have faith that you should handle the 50th anniversary of our struggle? to now. Um, a few years ago, down in the village where I used to live on 10th and Washington and had to move to uh, raise rents, in which now the penthouse sold for $34 million this year, um, the village was a place to come together. The subways are somewhat close, right? 6th Avenue right there, it's a very gay pride associated um, Path subway stop. But a few years ago when I was seeing the lights <laughs> on the Hudson River, look at everybody <laughs> taking romantic walks after the parade where everybody would funnel down to. There were police boats with bright lights shining on everyone. I took videos because it was kind of fun. But they came up and they were flashing everybody and that I just figured was just part of security post 9-11 especially. However, little did I know that was the last time we would ever be able to walk to the Hudson River. We would be able to go anywhere near the West Side Highway and that all the plans of the very, 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 very rich in the West West Village yeah. seem possibly to be taking over. Uh, in terms of what comes first to give both the NYPD and HOP directives. And that's what my concern is where all this might have been coming from in the first place. And there's a certain um, fact that when I came down to Greenwich Street, to Jane Street, to all the streets that have been home for home so, for so long and still are, I'm a native New Yorker, you couldn't walk because you trip on all the barricades, but you couldn't even get to your friend over on the sidewalk. There was no ability to be together anymore, to not trip together anymore, and the only place to sit was on stoops. Oh, and gee, what a surprise, that causes trouble. So 
in the area of the nonviolent conflict resolution here, let's not cause the conditions that cause problems. Yeah. And also, finally, this officer commander over here, you've since Occupy Wall Street done pickoffs. Everything might be going wonderfully, and then you and a team will, on Twitter or other social media now, especially pick people off. You know, and I get that you're doing your job, but we're doing ours too. But you need to do your job better, like some of you are here to improve. Woo! I'm Ann Northrup. Uh, I've marched for many decades in the parade. I was the speaker at the Stonewall 25 parade uh, 24 years ago. I'm a veteran of ACT UP. I've been arrested many, many times in demonstrations, uh, convicted on four counts for the St. Patrick's Cathedral demonstration. <laughs> in part because a police officer lied about my conduct on the stand. Blatantly sat there and lied about what he claimed to have seen me do. It was a lie. Uh, I have also gone into police precincts to do training on homosexuality, to make myself a local lesbian, to answer questions. <laughs> when I was doing this, I was working for the Hepburn Martin Institute. I, my job was to go around to local schools mostly and do these trainings. But I had a friend, Edgar Rodriguez, some of you may remember, who was a police officer, and he invited me and my colleagues into the precincts. I have to tell you, now this was a long time ago, but the police precincts and the police officers were the hardest people to talk to in the city. And I talked, I went to Canarsie, I went to the South Bronx, I went to drug programs on Staten Island, I talked to fourth graders, I talked to teenagers who bragged that they like to beat up fags on weekends in the village, but police officers were the toughest to deal with. Now, I say that in sorrow because I want us to all get along. Uh, and for us all to be happy and successful, but I'm just laying the groundwork of my experience. Uh, but I want to talk mostly to Hop. Uh, I do think we've lost the sense of this as a community event. I'm not interested in the corporation's participation. <laughs> the sidelines with big signs about their support. This march should be a community march of people, as the women's march was, not with little floats and contingents. The community should be allowed to get out into the street. And by allowed, I mean we should allow ourselves, not to have the powers to do it. I am, I mean, everyone has been so eloquent. I really applaud and echo everything everyone has said. Wristbands, forget it. Uh, I'm confused about the march route, um, and I'm confused about be it being a rehearsal for next year. Are you suggesting that next year this is going to be the route? No. 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 Excuse me? No. No. Somebody on drugs. Central Park. Back. We want to go back. Uh, let's remember that in uh, 1994, we marched uptown on Fifth Avenue and First Avenue yeah. and filled both those streets to Central Park and had a huge rally there. We're certainly not going to do this on whatever little diddly room you uh, <laughs> So I'm, uh, I'm out of the bars, off the sidewalks, into the streets. Everybody welcome. Uh, forget control, forget corporations, forget wristbands. First time when I uh, registered for Pride, and I was shocked that they lived at marshes, and they yeah. said we're trying to be fair, 
But immigrant community, asylum seeker cannot afford to pay additional one hundred fucking dollars for every people. And you are talking to me that you are supporting them. Where how have you been when Trump is attacking the immigration community? Yeah. Where have you been when we are persecuted on the basis? Where have you been reaching us and asking us, do you want to join the conversation on immigration, on bribe or whatever? I have been with in this business for 15 years. I survived violence in my country. I came not because I was intended to do so. And here I see corporation rising. So you put in the front row corporations, you put in the back community you are praising. Yep. But you are not the community, you are just commercialized right? And that's why my personal belief in the future, you have to rename yourself, you are not New York City Pride. You are Manhattan Pride, you are corporate Pride, and I believe that we have to put together and resist and Russia LGBT has joined resistant condition and from the next year we are not going to participate in this hoax. Okay, we are we want to make sure we have enough time to answer everyone's questions. So we're going to stop the line at this point. So those of you who are online. You will speak, but at this point, we're going to stop the conversation and get some of the responses. Hey there, my name is Ken Kidd. My pronouns are he, him, hey. Uh, I am a member of Rise and Resist. I'm a member of Gays Against Guns. I was a member of ACT UP. I was a member of Queer Nation. I still am at certain times. Uh, some of you all up here will remember that we negotiated pretty successfully for a resistance contingent last year. Uh, I want to speak to the past, and I want to speak to the present, and I want to speak to the future. And I want to speak specifically to Heritage of Pride. Uh, I also want to echo the fact that I believe that having a, a, the theme of defiantly different, and then putting all these layers and layers of restrictions, and the way that you all have negotiated in such poor faith is just an abomination. I really cannot tell you how horrible it makes me feel. Because I know for a fact, even in the slides that you showed tonight about, oh, and we've been working on this new pride route, and you had a date of January 22nd, 2017. I was at that meeting. I was there to start to negotiate with you all about last year. At no point did this stupid, small, rinky-dink route that has no bearing on our heritage of pride, I might add. Woo! March to nowhere. You know, I'm glad that it goes past the, the Ace Memorial. That's great. But, and I also want to say, just with regard to the good faith negotiations and the, or the lack thereof, the fact that this meeting is happening right now at the beginning of June, when you all are at the busiest point, when you all have put this off, when you yes. refuse to have it, when you all have canceled meetings with these very people who are coming out of these different points of view, does not speak well for transparency and does not speak well for why we should trust you. All of these things are of a piece. All of these things are reasons why we are not we're demanding, we're also begging as members of the same community that you honor the heritage of pride that is our heritage of pride, that the march, that the parade, that the dance, that Pride Island does not own. It's not a registered trademark. This is our culture. This is our history, and this is our future. To a lot of people in this country, and to a lot of people around the world who come to these events, this is the shot at freedom and the inspiration that they are looking for. And it is not about Walmart. It is not about Target. Right. And I also want to say, and I know I've got to go, as we plan for next year, and I mean we, because I fully intend on being there to talk about how we can improve this route and how we can improve which avenue we're going to wind up on. Right now, the resistance finally won and got a contingent in the march. In the back. Let me finish. <laughs> ABC stops its coverage at 3 p.m. Right. What time does the resistance line up? 3 p.m. 
So, the, so, 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 what this will look like to the nationwide audience is not unlike the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which was very first tonight. This is not a cavalcade of products. This is not an infomercial for folks. This is not what you need to buy in order to be a good gay. Well, I think that there could be a list of creative ideas and we could ask 
for the corporations to sponsor those ideas instead of letting them do what they want. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, look, yeah. I'm not against corporations. Corporations fought for gay marriage. You know, there's a lot of corporations that were on our side in a lot of these fights. And I think that the, I just think that the alignment, giving the whole parade over to them, is not what we need to do. And I think that it could work in a much, much more creative way that works out better for everyone. I think the parade could be more intelligent, more informative, more beautiful. Um, if the money was was arranged different in a different way. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Priya Nair. I use they, them, and also she, her pronouns. And I am the LGBT liaison for the speaker, Corey Johnson. Um, and he he did want to express his frustration. He wanted to be here, but he is stuck in budget negotiations. And he does feel very upset about the route um, and did talk to Heritage of Pride about the route. And I think everyone is committed to looking at the route for next year and making sure that the community is more involved from the beginning of that process. And you know, I'm taking very diligent notes in the back and you're welcome to come talk to me I'm in a green tie, and I'm also, you know, a queer and trans person of color, and I'm so sorry that, you know, everyone has not been heard in this process. And thank you all for being here. Uh, sorry, Alex, he him, um, back again. Uh, so, just two things, um, really quick. So. As Ken mentioned, that the 3 p.m. start off time for the resisting contingent that we had to win by publicly shaming Hop by holding a town hall first that preceded this one by a whole what, two weeks. Um, is exactly why this is happening. Oh, a month, I'm sorry. Is exactly why this meeting is happening after a succession of meetings that Hop also canceled, sometimes day of. As we have been coordinating with them since actually day can tell you January, where we were asked to have things in line by May, which we were going to have. So I want to preempt them before they take the opportunity to get back on the microphone and mischaracterize things again. Um, also, the mischaracterization of the idea that